This is a story of smoke and fumes. It's the story of how the world's most powerful industry used science, communications, and consumer psychology to shape the public debate over climate change. And it begins earlier, decades earlier, than anyone recognized. In 1968, a report commissioned by the oil industry detailed rising levels of CO2 in the atmosphere and warned industry leaders of potentially catastrophic climate risks melting ice caps, rising sea levels, impacts to fisheries and agriculture, and environmental impacts on a global scale. The report noted uncertainties, but acknowledged that the basic science of climate change was sound and that fossil fuels were the most likely source of rising CO2 levels in the atmosphere. More importantly, it recognized that the most important remaining uncertainties were technological. How would we respond and how would we modify our technology to reduce emissions? This was 1968, so the question becomes what led the industry to this point and what did they do with the information once they had it? We trace the genesis of this report to a meeting of oil and gas industry executives in Los Angeles in 1946. Faced with growing public concern about air pollution, the industry embarked on what would become a well-funded, carefully coordinated, multi-decade enterprise of funding scientific research and using that research to promote public skepticism of environmental regulations the industry considered hasty, costly, and potentially unnecessary. It named the enterprise the Smoke and Fumes Committee. In the ensuing decades, the industry funded massive levels of research into an array of air pollution issues. By the 1950s, at the latest, climate change was one of those issues. This shouldn't be surprising. Oil's business is carbon. Where to find it, how it moves for the environment, what happens to it on the way. They developed early and unparalleled expertise in geology and paleoclimates, in sea level rise, and the relationship between atmospheric CO2 and global temperatures, expertise in hurricanes, their causes, and their consequences. So when the climate debate began in earnest, there was no other industry on the planet as equipped or as motivated to understand that debate and to shape it. We began with three questions. What did they know? When did they know it? And what did they do about it? What we found is this. They knew a great deal. They knew it much earlier than widely recognized. And our findings add to the growing body of evidence that what they did with that information for much longer than previously recognized, was work to actively undermine the public's confidence in climate science and in the need for climate action. But don't take our word for it. Explore these documents for yourself and see how the industry collaborated to confuse the public, to promote scientific theories that disagreed with its own best information, and to block action on the most important challenge of our time or any time the challenge of confronting global climate change.